it's very important because uh, you sacrifice so much of your time in this game. You know, uh, I go home every summer. You know, you have people who you lose to death. You have people who age. You miss birthdays. You miss so much because of this dedication that I put to this sport, all for me myself to be a winner. <laughs> and it's like you miss out on so many things. And, and I think that's the reason I cried so much because of the sacrifices I was able to make and you know give to the game of basketball. But people don't understand you lose out on so many other aspects of life. Uh, you know, missing my kids first time ever walking. Mm -hmm. uh, first time saying their first word. You miss so mm -hmm. much in just life in general. And but that's what I put into the game. You know, that's what I was able to sacrifice. And um, yeah, it's tough, man. It's tough. People don't know that you just you just you miss out on life, man. Just for one thing. It's just incredible. Just for one thing. You know, just to be one of the best. Because I, you don't realize it until like right now. I look back on it. And it's like, man, you know, you, you did all this for one thing because you cared so much. And you know, that's just who I was. I cared so much and wanted to be a winner and wanted to raise a banner and wanted to be a champion. That it, it, it's, I don't know if it's all worth it in the end, but I surely feel like it is worth it. Do you remember sure. your first? Every day, you know, I walk into the practice facility, you see those numbers. Every day you see in the arena, you see these numbers. You know, that's that was inspiration. You know, those numbers hanging up there, those banners, it was just like, you know, one day, you know, I wanna I wanna be up there. I wanna be with this franchise long enough because when you look at the numbers and you see the accomplishments that they made, you're like, you know, that's that was an example for me to try to follow. That was the burning desire in me to like, you know, I want to, every day. It's like, it's like the pressure. It's like raining every day on you. You come up here and like, oh, well, how do you live up to these guys? How do you live up to, you know, Mikhail, Burr, Parrish, you know, even Maxwell. Well, Maxwell was easy. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, it's great just to have that hanging over your head, something you're trying to try to strive for. And uh, there's, some, there's some legendary names in there. And, for me to be mentioned and sitting on the side of those guys is just a tremendous honor. And with the way the NBA is today, where you know guys don't really stick around for one franchise, that I'm thinking like my number may may be up there for a while before you see the next number. <laughs> so uh, you know, but it's a truly an honor. Before the ceremony, not really sure uh, what I'm gonna say in my speech, but uh, huh? no, I'm gonna wing it. <laughs> yeah, so I just gotta make sure I like to thank everybody who supported me in my whole career. Thank you, God. 
Thank you to the Boston Celtics. Thank you to my family and friends who helped me along this amazing journey. It's been an amazing ride. Uh, I couldn't have did it without everyone, so uh, thank you. Now I can sit back, fill this belly up. But, uh, it's nice. Celtics, thank you, man. This really came out nice. I didn't know really what to expect. My son right here, Prince. Where's my number, Prince? Right there. That's it. <laughs> oh man. So here's the dinner, man. Cheers. Cheers, man. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Got my man Antoine Walker here, man. Big Twan. Let's see if I can get a zoom in of Twan. Let's see my man Antoine Walker and Walter McCarty. I'm about to get up and speak in a little while. So, uh, I'm going to get back to y'all in a minute. We're going to take lots of pictures, lots of videos, check it out. We're going to try to go live as much as possible. So, man, you know what I'm Show them that ring. That channel. Oh, I'm going back. My man, J. Crow. Have you seen this? This is the most unbelievable <laughs> thing I've ever seen. Oh Mike my, Zen. is he a model now? No, he's like the, the most available bachelor in life. I'm gonna kill him on it. I'm gonna kill him. Hey, that is so embarrassing. That is the best thing I've ever seen. This is your night, not my night. That is the best thing I've ever seen. This is your night, not my night. I mean, what a film tonight. Mike. <laughs> Hey, yeah. the most available, huh? This Best available on the 40. Wow. Best available. I think it's such a rap pick, though. Are you still available 45 or something? <laughs> hey. I didn't need a stylist. I didn't need a stylist. Hey. Oh Danny and Z, Thelma and Louise, y'all go down as two of the great twosomes of all time. You should Thelma and Louise. <laughs> Danny and Z. Uh, wait, who is it? Wow. Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty, Rick and Morty. <laughs> Anytime I could be up there with Morty, life is good. Wow. The, uh, I am going to do that. I might call Randy. Like, that's going to share. The great duos. <laughs> you, you two are in a great... What are some great twosomes? Like, in just like... Yeah, exactly. Acting or something. Like, you got Thel Batman and Robin. Thelma and Louise. You got who else? Like think of, like think of what are the great twos? Like I got it. No, 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 I got it. I'm trying to do it quietly. Danny Glover, Mel Gibson, Thelma Louise. What was the one you said? Batman and Robert, peanut butter and jelly. I, you know what I'm saying? Two yeah, things that just synonymous with each other. Take a picture of Jazzy. Hold it. Hold it. My baby girl right here. Say hi. Hi. It's my baby girl right there. Look at she. Jazzy Chase. She's going to be a handful. She already is. All right, y'all. I'm going to come back to y'all in a little bit. Bye.
you know, Paul Pierce, when he showed up, uh, uh, was like a little baby. <laughs> 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 I mean, he was wearing basketball diapers. <laughs> and what, ta- what happened the first so time? Sorry, guys. Was- they birthed him. It's all behind. He'd grow up. Okay? He, uh, he's been a, uh, a fabulous offensive player. And I've, I've told you many times that I still think he's the, the best offensive player with all the moves uh, to score. In, out, upside down. Uh, and the thing that sticks out in my mind more than anything is there's two things. One was when he was named captain of the Celtics, which to uh, one degree is, a, is an honor that's well respected by uh, the teammates. And he went out and bought a book on leadership. I never thought that that meant that much to him. And he wanted to be a real leader of this basketball team. Now, I coached this team for a number of years and, and coached in, in playoffs and what have you. And this guy wanted to take the shot every single time <laughs> that it was meaningful to win a ball game. That takes the most unusual personality because when you step up to that challenge and you're either going to be the hero or the goat, You've got to really have tremendous confidence in yourself. I mean, Bird was like that. Those two guys were the best finishers that Celtics ever had. Uh, and I've been watching a few years, you know. So, uh, he, uh, he epitomized what the Celtics were all about. He grew up as a player, as he did, he was a hard-working uh, teammate. Steve, I'm going to ask you a question if you know how to answer it. Here's your thoughts on Paul Pierce as you watch him go. We're going to be here for a while tonight. Oh, man, thank you to you. Again, and you see his brother and his mom, you see his family and his 